Hi there, welcome to 6, 7th and 8th channel of Baiju's. I'm your teacher Ankita and I welcome you in today's very special class where we will be discussing about the NCRT solutions for the chapter New Kings and Kingdoms. It's a very interesting chapter and we will be looking at all the questions that are there in the NCRT and we'll be finding that how we can write the answer in the examination. So please make sure to stay with us till the end. If you're new here, do take a moment and subscribe to our channel so that you can get all the information at one particular platform. On that note, let's get started. But before we start, I would request all of you to have your pencil, pen, notebook so that you can note down the answers or you can take the screenshot of the answers that we are discussing. And with that, let's get started. So here we have the first question and the match the following. So it, we have two columns. We have column A and column B. In column A, we have the name of the dynasties and in column B we have the name of the region that they were ruling. So I'll give you three seconds time quickly take a look at the screen and just try to match it up. One, two, three. I'm sure it would have been really very easy for you. So now let's quickly check the answers. So we know that Gurjara, Pratiharas, right? They were there in Gujarat and Rajasthan. So biggest hint over here is the word, right? The three Words that we have over here that actually give you us a hint about the Gujarat word as such. So yeah, you can match it up in that way. Then we have Rashtrakuta. So they were ruling in the Western Deccan part, right? Then we have the Palas, which were there in the West Bengal. Or we'll not call it as a West Bengal, we'll call it as a Bengal. And the Cholas in Tamil Nadu. So please make sure to take a note of this. Moving ahead to question number two. Here we have, who were the parties involved in the tripartite struggle? Now, this is a very important question. Now, we are talking about the three different dynasties who were struggling or who were fighting for one particular place, right? We know that place was in Uttar Pradesh, current Uttar, Uttar Pradesh and the place name is Kannauj. So, we know that they were struggling or there was a war for one particular city. They want to capture that city. And there are three parties involved and the question is asking us to write that name. So let's see who are these three parties. So we can write our answer in such a way that we have three parties which were involved in the struggle and who are fighting over a place which was Kannauj. So this is very important for us to mention this particular answer. Then we will be writing the name. So we have Gurjars right guru jaras right we have pratiharas we have rashtrakutas and we have palas okay we will mention in this particular way so that's question number two for us and we are done with it moving to the next question what were the qualification necessary to become a member of a community right or a committee of sabhas in the chola empire so this empire of course we all have studied it's a very huge empire had a very good system and of course has various different committees right over here we're talking about a sabha so what were the basic qualifications that are required from an individual to join that so let's quickly take a look over here so we have a long list of it if this question comes for three marks we can write three points if this question comes for a lengthy like four marks or for five marks you can mention all the points so here let's quickly look at the points first of course if someone has to become the member of the sabha one should own a land this is very important criteria they should be the owner of the land right which the land revenue is collected and should have their own homes so two important conditions are there that one of the one they, they should have their own land they should have their own home and of course from which on the land right they can collect the revenue also second point they should be aged between 35 to 70 years of age this is very very crucial then, apart from that, when they are in that particular uh, range of the age, they should also have the knowledge of the Vedas. So this is one more important point that we all will remember for this particular answer. Then, one should be honest and well-versed in the administrative matters. A very common thing for all the people, right? It's something that they should be very honest when they are in a committee. And the third, uh, the, the fourth point is that they should 
if anyone been a member of any committee in the last three years, he cannot be a member of another committee. So of course there are various various different other communities that were there on the committees which were there, right? So if the uh, if the one person is there, they cannot be a member of the another committee. That's very uh, kind of fair because they'll be contributing to this particular discussions and other things. The last point that anyone who has not submitted his account or his relatives cannot contest in the elections. This is very very important for us to remember. So we have these points over here. Do take a screenshot of this and please make sure, make sure to write this in the examination if this question comes up. Now they can actually change the question and they can ask you in different particular format. Okay, okay. Um, for example, what was the rules and regulation for a member of committee in if they are a member in the Sabha, right? Uh, for example, you can, the question can be twisted a bit, right? So Please make sure to read the question carefully because the answer will remain the same. They might just change the question here and there. And it's a very important question from the exam point of view. Moving to the next question, what we have is, uh, what were the two major cities under the control of the Chahamanas? Right now, this is a very straightforward, very easy question. And the answer is that the two major cities that were the under control were Delhi and Ajmer. Easy. That's a very straightforward answer that we have. Moving to the next question. How did the Rashtri Kutas become powerful? Now it's a very important question. It's a very important long question, right? So Rashtri Kutas, as we all know, were not the kings, right? They were not in the uh, ruling position, but they were the subordinates, right, of the Cholakyas. Now, as they got the power, they overthrew it. They performed the Garbha, right? We have the Hirna Garbha ceremony they performed, and that's how they got the power. Let's see how we can frame this in the answer. So here we have, we'll start with the, the, the Rashtri Kutas and the Deccan was the subordinates of the Cholakyas of the Karnataka. Right? During the mid 18th uh, century, we, uh, 8th century, not the 18th century, I'm sorry for that. We have Dati Durga, right? And he was the subordinate to Cholakyas. He actually overthrew his Cholakyas overhead, right? And performed a ritual called as the Hirnaya Garbha, right? With the help of the Brahmins. And this particular process actually helped uh, in a kind of rebirth concept. So, they believe that whatever uh, you know, whatever community they belongs to, after performing this particular ritual, they will be in a community where the kings are born, right? So in this particular way, it will be easy for the people to accept them as the new king. Okay. Now during this particular period, right, of the Hiranya Garbha, what will happen? It was thought to be the sacrificer would be reborn. So in this whole process, we, uh, you know, the people at that particular time believe that it will be a rebirth, right, uh, of the Shastriya. So these, these were the uh, warriors. So we remember that back then, uh, the society was divided into different Varnas or the, uh, the different, uh, based upon the occupation the person is performing. We have Brahmins, we have Kshatriya, we have Vaishnavs and we have Shudras. So we have these four categories back then and based upon that, the Kshatriya were the warriors, the kings, the people who would be going in a war. So after performing the ceremony, yes, they are the Kshatriya, now they can become the king. That was the concept then. Then, of course, after that, after performing that, of course, they uh, fought with other neighbors, dynasties, right, for the powers, which includes the Gurjara, you know, Pratiharas and uh, the Palas. So we remember that uh, Gurjara um, Pratiharas were the people who were ruling the Gujarat and Rajasthan and Palas were there in the Bengal. So, of course, as they grew their power, Rashtrakuta fought with these two different dynasties. And they were there in the struggle for the city of Kannauj also. Now, the last part you can mention about that, they successfully established kingdom in Karnataka and Rajasthan respectively later. So this is how, uh, you know, you can frame your answer in this particular way. So with that, we are done with this particular question. Now let's take a look at the next question. The next question is, what did the new dynasties do to gain the acceptance? It's a very straightforward question again. What did they do? So now they are not in the, uh, you know, they are, they are not there in the king's uh, family, but they got the power. So what did they do for the people to accept them? Let's quickly see over here. To gain the acceptance, right, they perform various religious 
rituals to become a part of Shastriya. Hirna, Garbha, ceremony, you can mention about that also, right? Then, of course, initially they were regarded as the Samanthas, right? But of course, they overthrew it and then they got more and more power. They become Maha Samanthas and then later, of course, they become the king. As the wealth grow, right, uh, they actually started capturing and that's how uh, they have more and more power. And once they have the power, once they have overthrown a particular, you know, a king at that particular place, they, they will perform a ceremony and uh, you know, spiritual uh, rituals and the Hiranya Garbha ceremony, uh, ceremony so that the people can accept them as a king. So this is how you can frame the answer for this. Moving to the next question, here we go. What kind of irrigation works were developed in Tamil region? Now this is a very, again, a very important question focusing on the work done by the empire as in for the development for the agriculture. So here we have during the 5th or the 6th century, right? Uh, the Kaveri River plays a very important role. So the River Kaveri, right, uh, were opened for a large scale cultivation. So the irrigation works were developed in the Tamil Nadu with the water channels. So the river has been divided into various water channels so that the water can reach to different parts for the purpose of irrigation. Construction was made, uh, construction of embankment was made to avoid the floods. Embankment are nothing but, you know, the jute bags filled with the sand and it'll be, you know, it will be placed um, under, 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 under the river if there's something ups and downs so they will be stopping the flow of the water and it can actually avoid the floods or to prevent the floods not avoid the floods but to prevent the floods and of course digging up the well and tanks for the storage of the water so that the people can use this water for the cultivation and for the agriculture so this is how we can frame this particular answer moving to the next question the question number eight over here what were the activities associated with Chola's temple? So these are the important words that we have in the question itself. Activities associated with the Chola's temple. We have studied that Chola's temples were really very huge in structure and they kind of acted as a center of the settlement. So we have discussed that the temples, right, were surrounded by various other settlement. People with craft, people with trade, tourism, right? Everything got settled around the temple and that becomes the center of the development. So let's see how we can frame the answer. So here, the Chola's temple was the center of the craft production and is often called as a nuclear settlement, the center of the settlement, which grew, right, the cities will be growing around the temple. The Chola's temple was not only the place of worship, but of course it was there for the economical, social and Cultural life, people will come there, they'll have their social life, it's more towards a culture, right, and there were dancers who were there, the prayers were happening, and of course it becomes a place where there, there's a uh, exchange of the money also, economical growth, craft was there, so of course people will come, people will see, people will buy the products, so that's how it becomes the center of all of these. Then they were also endeavored with the land, by, with the rulers and of course with the others. The production, so the produce of this land, right, of course, the, if the lands are there, it will be there and of course, it will be used for the temple itself. Among the craft associated with the temples, right, they used to make the bronze image, right, of the god and sometimes of the devotees also. It is considered as the finest from there and of course people will come and people will buy and that's how the growth will occur in the terms of the economy. And the last point, most of these bronze images were was made in a kind of to represent the God or to the devotees and that's we have discussed in a previous point also. So you can write your answer in four or five points if this question comes to five marks or two or three points run up for three marks question. So this is how we can frame this particular question. And with this particular question, we are actually done with all the questions from this chapter, New Kings and Kingdoms. So, I hope that you have understood and I hope that you have gotten an idea of how you can write the answer in the examination. Please do take the screenshot later also if you're watching this video. Don't worry about it. And as we all say that we have got you covered, we'll make sure to give you the quality education on this channel. So please make sure to subscribe to this channel and please make sure to stay with us. If you have enjoyed this class, please make sure to like the video and share this with your friends. And I'll say that, do take care of yourself and keep on learning with Baijus. Bye-bye.